and good old PSA. Uh, there's a holiday coming up. Is it Martin Luther King? Day? Yeah. So that's weird because normally when you hear holiday and you think, woo, you know, that's your original <laughs> thought, <laughs> right? You see where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> Is it hot water or is it broth? Today, we break down the careers of two famous YouTubers, Robert Rosario and Dylan Charles Diaz, as we see what it takes to become a successful YouTuber. I thought it would be the most famous superstitions, but... What? Now that you... <laughs> superstitions? Uh, uh, yeah, so people who are the masters of soup, they are they are like musicians, uh -huh. but superstition. Like, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Where does bowling for soup fall in this... In this ranking, uh, that is uh, that fits into sports and leisure. Oh, okay. yeah, that 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 that's uh, <laughs> before we lose our audience, welcome to the joystick show. This is a podcast <coughs> where we, uh, you know, yeah, talk about hard hitting non soup discussive topics yeah. and and we contribute to the non soup zeitgeist. That's mm -hmm. great. We, we will riff on anything, yeah, whether good or bad. We're gonna be uh, talking to your ears for the next 40 ish minutes. Uh, no Joey, no Jerry. Usually no. we'd be like that's too bad, but you know what? I'm sick and tired of them. I've had my I've, I'm up to here with both of them, you know. Fuck them. You know, I've been talking to the guys up at the big cuz you know, everyone thinks that you and I are the everyone thinks that you know, like you and me are the the head honchos yeah. of Joystick. I feel like it's easy to look at Team Joystick and think, "Oh, you know, Bobby and Dylan are the static co-hosts. Bobby edits everything and uploads it. At the very least, Bobby's in charge. But no, we're just the puppets. You know? We're, yeah. And in fact, think of think of corporate. Think of executives. Think of nonprofit. Mm -hmm. In fact, how do you think we keep the fucking lights on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank our president, my mom. <laughs> For keeping these lights on. Uh, to be honest, I, I I don't know why my brain went. All right, he's gonna say Trump or he's gonna say Kyle Rittenhouse <laughs> or my mom. Yeah, 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 like those are the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. bad bad collection for your why, mom. To why be would in. I go like the the political route if we're talking? I don't about, know. We're talking about corporate business. I it's like we production company. We I was thinking like Disney. People. You know. Oh, I was thinking just famous people. When do we sell out to Disney? As soon as we're offered that opportunity? Or? I don't know. I don't know if we're... Uh, Disney has some dirt, but I don't think they're as... Uh, they're, we're, we're, uh, we, we may have lost them on some of the non-family friendly segments. Got you. Got you. Yeah. 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 In fact, I've applied for some internships over the past few weeks. And you think you single-handedly haven't gotten them because they've seen your <clears throat> podcast? No. I think that though I have a better chance because I've applied for a few. In fact, I've seen many job listings because you can set up the... I had alerts set up on Indeed and LinkedIn and yeah, stuff like yeah. that for all the internships. But now I swapped them to like actual jobs because after the internship, that's when I move on up. The amount of like podcasting sales, podcast advertising. Look. Yeah. Could you do some of that for this podcast? That'd be cool. Uh, no, but that. But I'm, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that once I'm in. Not yeah. only was this the proof that we didn't waste our fucking time, yeah, but that's yeah. the in. Yeah, yeah. And then we're fucking in there. I mean, I was even looking into if there was like potential with podcast consulting or something like that, like helping people get up on their feet with, yeah. with their podcast, but in a way that's actually helpful and fruitful and isn't just me like, make a podcast about gardening and figure it out, you know? So, I don't know. But I've been thinking about that too, you mm -hmm. know? Ways to, ways to turn this into a lucrative business. That's not a scam. Speaking of ludicrous, the rapper. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, yo. <laughs> Can we get this? And I was gonna say uh, before I move on, I never actually yeah. had the chance to say, you know, welcome, like Team Joystick. Hey. That's not how that works. No. Subscribe to Team Joystick and like this episode of the Joystick Show, episode 124. Been yeah. doing this for quite a while. Hell yeah. Very consistently. Mm-hmm consistent once we have like all the uh i feel like at a later point we should also like just pop up like once we have like every social media actually like oh yeah know, actually like, like posting to yeah 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 mm -hmm. so like the tiktok and things like that yeah we'll, it, it's really just gonna be like tiktok and instagram yeah right? that's about it. that's all we maybe like a twitter 
<laughs> Our individual know. Twitters. That's yeah, better. yeah, yeah. Where we just post fucking nonsense. Exactly. I post all of the memes that won't get taken down. Mm-hmm. I attempt. I actually like really tried to spruce up a Facebook page for Joystick, mm-hmm. and then nobody saw it in a like a, a two month period. And I was like, maybe we don't need a Facebook. Yeah, maybe. Page. Yeah. I remember you said that to me, and it was like you were like, oh, we get a lot of traction on our, on our Facebook, and I'm like chef son but that was the thing it wasn't necessarily our facebook page it's just a lot of people who watch the chef son or family members and older friends and family who are on facebook so continually on facebook yeah exactly that's why i was like maybe it doesn't hurt to have a facebook page but the more and more i thought about it i was like nah just fucking direct them to the youtube and and they'll find us you know that's important i do need to get on that tiktok grind oh yeah i mean tiktok is uh that's like legit the next thing we're working on so hopefully that's up and gun up and running before feb i watched the video that was like 2022 in review and literally over half the video was just tiktok clips yeah and i was like oh that's just that's the world (laughs) now that's the way yeah and we were like we were like oh when's china gonna take over they already did. They they took yeah. over like fucking four years. I know, ago, but bro. I'm saying like especially as soon now. As those kids started doing all those dances pre-pandemic. Yeah. China won. That yeah, was yeah, it. yeah. That was it. They were just laying the gra- the foundation, and now we just all. We're down with CCP. Yeah. Yeah, you know me. Fucking <laughs> cock conservation. Let me uh, let me let me continue where you left off with this 2022 year in review because I have something. I don't know. It's it's funny in general, but funny. I want to share what happened to the mic break. Or are you what? good? The mic yeah, break. yeah, yeah. It like came off a bit, but it's, it's oh. Don't worry, the- guys. We're running on fucking empty here. We have our equipment's falling apart. You know, if you want to swing like a dollar our way, here's a donation link. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and definitely click that because that's definitely where it'll take you. Totally to a donation link and not somewhere sneaky. Uh, regardless, <laughs> I was gonna say I had to review something that happened in 2022 for my mother recently. Okay. Uh, my mother. Uh, we were sitting down on the couch. We were watching nothing in particular. She was watching like uh, you know one of those, one of those Chicago, oh, Chicago one fucking of you know Chicago sanitation, Chicago yeah. mail. You know yeah. <laughs> those guys. <laughs> that show we'd be so sick. It's like where the fuck is the priority shipping? <laughs> where is it? It's supposed to be overnight. <laughs> we're closed on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, fucking <laughs> no. We were, she was watching one of those Chicago dramas. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. And. Uh, sure. I asked her very candidly, well, not candidly, you know, we were talking some uh, along the lines of it, and I said, you know who Andrew Tate is, right? And she said, no. Oh. So I got, I got to explain the saga of Andrew Tate oh, to my mother. what a fucking, what a, what a year-long saga that's been. Right? So, uh, basically, I, I talked to my mom about it, and I broke it down like this. I said, uh, I said, Andrew Tate is this former professional kickboxer yeah, who had a pretty that. decent record. I think he was like 25 and 2 or something like that. He's uh he's American born, British raised, so he has this weird ass fucking way of talking where, where it's like every for few eighty five percent is American, but anytime there's a, a double T, it's little. You know what I mean? He has a Bugatti, so I don't know. Uh, and then I explained the whole thing about how he got popular on TikTok. He started his whole fucking school classes to pick yeah. up chicks, and then he just ended up being this ridiculous misogynist who's which like, like from the beginning, yeah. the writing was on the wall with like almost all of it. Like in terms of like the like he marketed like being sexist, yeah, and he made it cool. Oh yeah, for sure, he made being sexist cool. Which... I even I even told my mom I was like, there's this whole thing about how the algorithms on these platforms like Instagram and TikToks were giving it his content uh, specifically to like young male audiences to the point where like schools in the uk are having re-education classes for kids they're they're considering brainwashed by andrew tate and then of course i went into the whole uh fun story about how greta thunberg quote unquote took him down even though it wasn't true but you know for the sake of how funny it is it is true let's just say that uh but then you know finally i was just explaining to her that you know half of the internet is kind of like free andrew tate and the other half is kind of like finally because you know i wouldn't say it's a complete but i know what you mean you know what i mean but there's there's a split it's divided yeah you know what i mean so i was just kind of telling her about his uh his mythos and then she was asking me she was like well what's some of the shit that he said so i looked up worst things andrew tate has said and i found a great list of the eight worst things andrew Tate. oh i know some of these probably and if anybody would like to uh just cut this clip and have me speak out of context go for it you can make me sound like a wild misogynist and you're on a podcast too it's like perfect with the lighting it's like you can i borrow your sunglasses yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) all right ready uh (laughs) top g (laughs) 
God, this one's terrible. I mean, this is like, this is like what er, not what everybody says, but this is something that's been said cookie before. Cutter. A cookie cutter, cookie but cutter, but in an androgynous kind of way. You know, if you put yourself in a position to be raped, you must bear some responsibility, right? That's like the whole fucking. You know, yeah. you were asking for it, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, Don't dress like And that. that's number eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> that's a great way to start, yeah. <laughs> number seven. This belief does discredit as a whole. Stick to the serious definitions and stop pretending normal male behavior is rape. <laughs> we, this is what I do all the time, all right? This isn't, you know what I mean? Oh, God. And then you find out that he had, like, the women as part of his whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. Branded he, with a tattoo. Well, I mean, I remember there was, like, a podcast year, like a year and a half ago where he literally explained how to be a pimp. Yeah. Like, how to do it. And I was like... Is no one gonna like like Stop confiscate this him? Like he literally was like, "Here's how you make money." Like he actually has a, an actual class, like, his money making class. He has a side class which teaches you how to do the webcam business, <sighs> which is literally human trafficking. Because step one is go to UK and get women from the United States to fly to the UK, what the which fuck? is literally human trafficking. What the fuck? He literally promoted human trafficking on like a bunch of different platforms. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's him. He's ballsy. I'll Good old that. Tate. Number six. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you be with a woman who's not a virgin anyway? She's used goods secondhand. <laughs> God, who's this oh, that's, man? Oh, that's the best. Oh, oh, that's the best. Whenever someone uses a comparable for a woman, and then the first thing they think of is not another human being, they are sexist. Yeah. Every time. It's like, well, if we look at the bird kingdom, it's like, we're not talking about the fucking bird kingdom, bro. Like, uh, this guy does that all the time. Like, uh, Jordan Peterson yeah, does that yeah, a yeah. lot. Uh, any, like, right-wing person that's, like, a scientist, it's like, oh, I have a doctorate, so I'm allowed to be sexist. Yeah. It's like, no. no like, <laughs> you're allowed to be an idiot yeah uh number five we're gonna take a nice little stray away from oh. women comments this is nice this is his take on mental health issues oh god so people defend depression they get angry when i say this because they need this bullshit to justify their own failures by admitting i'm right they need to work hard to make themselves happy to avoid the work argue with me and pretend depression is a thing so, you know, that thing that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And he, the way he set that up is too genius, too, because he's like, oh, I know how you're going to. I know the first reaction is for you to fight is you're going to want to fight with me. Yeah. So if you try to argue with him, oh, well, you're just a, you're, 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 you're proving my point. Exactly. Oh, God. He's well, great. Yeah, yeah. What a genius, sadly. This one is actually one I've heard multiple times. I've seen the video and it is by far when I say my favorite Andrew Tate quote. I mean, yeah, I, like, I, you know, know what I you mean. mean. My, you know maybe my least favorite, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, yeah, you, get, you get the ranking there. Mm -hmm. uh, by extension, if I have responsibility over... Can I say like him real quick? Yeah. yeah. By extension, if I have responsibility over yeah, her, yeah, there it is. Yeah. then I must have a degree of authority. So, you know, there you go. If he's responsible for you, then he has a degree of authority over you. Mm -hmm. Can this man never have children? Like, can that be yeah, a thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the sad part is that a lot of... Because of the, the general like dominant nature of men i feel like a lot of people hear it and they're like yeah i do want to be in charge of everything it's yeah. like no shit that's yeah like yeah that's why people wanted to be king back in the fucking day this guess what is, we don't have kings and queens anymore this one places. isn't as descriptive or like you know downright evil but it's pretty straight yeah, number four point. number three this is what three is it? it's pretty to the point it kind of sums up yeah. everything that not only tate is but who he attracts right one of the best things about being a man is being territorial and being able to say that is mine. If like if we're being real, that's really his fucking thing. Is yeah. he just wants to own everything. He wants to own women and cars and power and whatever the fuck he can get his little kickboxing hands on. So mm -hmm. that's a good one. Let's see what number two. And it is. kinda it kinda makes sense of why he was so captivating to children and teenagers. Uh huh. It makes so much sense because when you're like a little kid that's everything you fucking want. Everything. You're, you're, you're 12. You haven't had sex before. Yeah. You don't have a cool car. You've never even fucking driven. The most you drove a cold car once. Yeah. And you may be an ATV if you're fucking lucky. Mm -hmm. This guy is everything. And he says, you can have all of this if you own woman and you're fucking like, misogynistic. And it's like, oh, yo, that's the. If you fly in women to the UK yeah, from yeah. the United States. <laughs> and then move them to Romania and have them fucking. Imagine it's like if it got really descriptive. He's like, all right, kid. On your 15th birthday, you're going to save all of your money. You're going to go to this town in America. <laughs> Here, it's okay to kidnap women. It's yeah. allowed. <laughs> uh, number two, 
I'm not a rapist, but I like the idea of just being able to do what I want. I like being free. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is what he was saying in response to that like whole webcam shit. Remember when he was like, he literally said that was out of context a little bit. I'll give him a little benefit of the doubt, but that one's like the worst one by far. Just the one I don't think this is any out of context. But... I, know, I know, I know, but what I mean is that like, like it's it's like like you know what I mean. Like you could easily take that wording out of someone you know what i mean yeah like but i it's still horrible yeah this is like i said this is when he was being investigated about moving to romania because it's like lenient or stuff like. and by the way again he said that he's like i moved here because the cops don't care and that was part of that and then uh finally here we go number one uh and this is kind of interesting because it kind of shows you uh where i guess quote unquote andrew tate's justification comes from you know read the bible Every single man had multiple wives. Not a single woman had multiple husbands. It's against the will of God. It's disgusting. So I guess at the end of it, he's right, you know? Because yeah. if the Bible says it, mm-hmm. who are we to who are we to attack that, Dylan? Yeah. Fuck, we went th- we went through this whole list only to end up agreeing with him in the end. Yeah. And by that I say, go fuck yourself, Andrew Tate. Like, Seriously, you have made a new podcast enemy. Yeah. And he's never going to see this, but... No, I mean, he's he, he's been on my radar for a, a little bit, but I, I wasn't really ever on TikTok, so I never really got... I was only exposed when, like, streamers and other people I watched. No, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I remember especially, like, when, I, when Hassan first debated him, I think, mm-hmm. was, like, when I really was, like, oh... Like that's, was it uh, Aiden Ross he used to do those co-streams with, I think? Yeah. And like fucking, which is kind of funny considering Aiden Ross is like a young man. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah. I mean, all of the, I mean, that all of the streamers that loved him were all 16 to 20 year old streamers. None of them were any older, any younger. All of them were like, what the fuck is this? Yep. Yep. All of them saw right through it. Yeah. Uh, happy to report he's in jail. And uh, let's see what uh, let's see what happens with those court. Apparently, I just read that it's apparently going to be even worse for him. So I was like, oh, that's great, that's fantastic. Oh yeah, they're not giving any. Uh, they're not going to give him any benefit. I don't think. So that was me getting to explain Andrew Tate to my mother, yeah. a woman, a proud, strong. Oh yeah, woman. strong, a strong woman. So you can tell how much she loves him. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. He's just. I. I like. I'm. I don't even know, bro. It's like to anyone that defends that kind of thing, it's not about free speech. Read those quotes. That's not that's not free hey. That's not free speech. It, is it considered hate speech? Yeah, you're hating you're hating on women. No, it like definitely with some of those, but I, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're so right. some of them are not. Some of them are just you're fucked up. Right? No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the, not, yeah. not to not to 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 credit it in any way. But I'm just saying there's probably some other term for it that isn't hate speech. It's probably just like fucking defamation. Oh yeah, defamation sort. against women. Just yeah, just being an idiot. Yeah, you know? <laughs> being a half American, half British idiot. That's probably where it comes from. Mm-hmm. You know, what side? Just both. <laughs> and he had to deal with both. <laughs> People think the people think Brits are fucking you know they're all esteemed and posh. That's like fucking five percent of that no, country, no, no. that, that people, nation. People had do not know Brits. Yeah, so yeah exactly. And that's same. not me shitting on Brits. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, like they, yeah, I could yeah. I could fuck with Brits. They look cool. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I like of course America too has like those same like yeah. subcultures. Uh, one of my favorite is is uh, Australia is a crazy one. Australia, and New Zealand. Uh huh. Because they're some of like the craziest fucking people. Yeah. But almost all of them make bread. Like al- almost all of them have a job. They make money, but they're fucking insane. Insane. Like they will be like six days a week, like an executive and then jump off a mountain. Yep. Like they're just like, oh yeah. I fucking this. cunt. <laughs> it's like, Want to do a cur- shoeing. Liter- literally, they worked in where cunt is like a term of endearment, yeah. kind of. It's like, how the f- Like, it makes sense an island full of criminals would do that, but still. Like, I fucking, I watched the, the this, they did a Smash <coughs> documentary for Josh Man, who's the number one player in, uh, in Oceania, yeah. in Australia, New Zealand region. And uh, at the very beginning of the documentary, there's a disclaimer that's like, forewarning, there's going to be a lot of Australian language in this documentary. And every other word is, but it's like a term of endearment. He's like, I love those fucking cunts, man. Like, they're my boys, you know, like that, that, that fucking cunt really saved my life. And yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, fucking yeah, funny. Yeah, it's hysterical. I love it. Here. I love it's it. It's so casual. You're it's like, it. yeah. That's it's why I love fucking uh, Instant Hotel. Like, that's a great <laughs> show. It's so good. Shout outs to, what are their names? Bondi and fucking. Oh, I forgot her mom's name. They're great. They're great. Bonsai. Bonsai, yeah. Bonsai. Gene. No, it's a it's a mother. Well, the thing the thing in that show, I'm not gonna get in. I've, uh, instant hotel show couples, teams of two, 
they show off their Airbnbs. Uh, they have to vote on them. Winner gets big prize. Yeah, that's great. That's it, right? It's a good show, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. If, you, if it doesn't sell you, they're Australian. So then go watch it then, and it's way better, I promise. There's just there is there's hate and fucking swear words, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you're not going into detail about TV, which is weird because I feel like we are like – that's kind of that's our kind thing of our a little. Thing. We do that sometimes where we go in depth about TV shows. The thing with Instant Hotel is I'd have to give it a good rewatch before I, I like really promote it. Exactly. Oh, okay. And if anything, I'd say like if there's a show we'd have to talk about, it's a show you showed yes. us last uh, week. Sh- show. A, a show. Shmo- schmode. I schmode you guys. You got like something hanging off your chin. No homo. It was like a piece of lint. Mm-hmm. I think you got it. Let me see. I think you can probably oh, no, no, it's still hanging off your up. Oh, yeah, that, no, yep, yep. Pull it. Yeah, Yo, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. It's part sweater. of your sweater. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, you showed us a show last week. Yeah. That... So I've noticed a few streamers and a couple of other people, uh, watching the same show, on Twitch. Which is like a recurring theme. Right? It always. I've... It's always some weird show from a mad long time ago that is very entertaining yeah. in its own right. Mm-hmm. That gets rediscovered yeah. and recycled by one, my, my, I think one of my favorite streams where it was the combo of Hasanavi, Myth, and JPEG Mafia watching uh, a show called Black and White. Where a family of white people dressed up as blackface and a family of black people dressed up as being white for a week. And I was like, this is the funniest fucking show I've ever... It's, like, so fucking... Especially when it's, like, dated. Like, it's yeah, from, like, the yeah, 90s, yeah. early 2000s. You're like, this is, we did this? And uh, in a similar vein of reality shows, is a show I found, uh, which came out in the year of our Lord 2003, which now, damn, that's 20 years ago at this point. And that show is The Joe Schmo Show, yes. uh, which originally launched on Spike TV, Spike TV yeah. which, if you guys don't know, Spike TV had a great lineup of fucking shows. the man's channel. It had a man channel. Joe Rogan had his own show. Burt Kreischer had his own show. Fucking. It's where they aired reruns of that. What was that show? Uh, Maximum Exposure, Maximum the Japanese Expo- yeah, show. Yeah, uh, fucking Thousand Ways to Die. Fucking absolute classic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, Joe Schmo Show, to explain, I think there was three seasons in total is a reality show in which the only person that's actually part of the reality show is one person. In season one, his name is Matt. Yeah. And everyone else is a paid actor. Yep. Specifically playing a certain typecasted role that you would normally see in a reality yeah. show. So the, there's 10 characters on the show. There's nine contestants and one host. Mm. Matt is the one person on the show who doesn't know he's on a completely scripted, written, and acted show. Yes. The other eight contestants and the host are all paid actors. And it's a made-up entire concept. Every game, the entire house, the show itself they're on is fake. It's, mm-hmm. it's made up. It's called Lap of Luxury, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And just as a another in- interesting, uh, you know, we were even doing like research into a lot of the people to see like where they ended up now, like the different actors and stuff. Just to credit them, it feels like every season they get like one person who ended up like blowing up. And in the first season, it's Kristen Wiig. Yeah. And then we did more research and it turned out like three or four of the actors were like quite notable. Yeah. They went on to like write for like It's Always Sunny or like and they voice really big animated characters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this show is fucking magical, man. I mean, I don't know what it is about these type of, whether it be Nathan for You or any of these type of just comedy reality shows, Mm -hmm. but there's just something very special about seeing the way people react in situations. Yeah. Because much like how I talked about in the rehearsal, you can't ever prepare for how someone will react. And and in that way, you get almost like real reality in Mm -hmm. a way. Where it's like you have all of these actors and then you have the one real person who's getting pranked. But it's just fun to see his reaction yeah. to everything. Hey, what was your reaction to seeing the show? Because I, I've rewatched the first episode twice and I believe I watched four in total now. Um, My honest reaction <laughs> to the show is this. The show is hilarious as fuck. Yeah. It is hilarious. Like, first of all, they go through this whole thing at the beginning where they show you, like, the audition process that they went to to pick the person. And without, like shitting on him or glorifying too much like the the guy they got his name is matt is by far the most perfect candidate they could have they got they, they like the the they uh i don't know it's kind of like when you're finding like the job like a, a job search yeah and you're finding like a candidate who's perfect they really fucking yeah just... he's like i don't like he's just like the perfect 
just like gray man you know yeah, what i yeah, mean yeah, like yeah. he's he's cool with people but he's also like territorial when he has to be yeah. he also like wants to hook up with women but, but he's also they, like super homie yeah when they turn him down he's like all right cool no problem like you know what i mean he's just very like nothing really rocks him too much but i think that's what makes the show so funny because mm. every time the producers and even the other cast members are like fuck he figured it out it just cuts to him and he's like you think Rebecca's in the movie? Yeah, like, yeah, stupid yeah. shit like, like that. And, and it's because he's so, he's so genuine. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're yeah. like, he ca- he really cares. Uh-huh. And he's showing, and it's like, part of me, at, at first, I thought like, oh, he thinks he's on like a reality show. Mm-hmm. So he's like playing it up a little bit. But then you're like, no, this guy's actually just a nice guy mm-hmm. who also might want to have sex with these women. Yeah. But <laughs> And the thing I was going to say also was that, like I said earlier, the show is funny. It's hilarious. Like you watch it and you fucking cry over some of these situations that are happening, both yes. getting to see his reactions and the reactions of the other cast members. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's also really fucking interesting to watch too, because you're not just watching a reality show where like, you know, in most cases it's like, whatever happens, happens, you film it and you account for it. You're watching a scripted reality show where based off of whatever this guy, Matt decides to do, the entire crew has to scramble together. Yeah, they have get to figure actors. out. Something. They have to come up with brand new plot lines and, and ideas for sub. It's like an alternate. Uh, you have they to... have to find out how to get Matt in a certain room without it sounding weird. So yeah. they come up with a whole challenge just to have him win on purpose. And the win is you get your own master bedroom. Yeah, but yeah, it's so yeah. they can... And in fact, he lost. I remember he got like his own room and then they were like, no, we gave him the master suite because yeah. they, they wanted to. Yeah. But it all seemed, I don't know, that just the thing that really like got me excited was it kept the consistency over one for one reality show yeah it did where because all of the actors get their own camera like it'll cut to them and they'll say they're what they were feeling and they'll be in the interview and it's like it's super interesting to see what their side was because yeah. you get to hear what they thought like oh we thought matt would fall for this yeah or it didn't, you get to see it from versa. the actor's perspective which is fucking dope and I was also just going to say that uh, I think the only thing that would have done the the show better was if it came out a little later. Like if shows like Survivor and Big Brother had a little a little more time to flourish. They blew up, yeah. And be the phenomenon <clears throat> that they were in like the mid to later 2000s. Yeah, because yeah. CBS made so much fucking money of just Survivor, Big Brother, The Amazing Race. Amazing Race, yeah. Like they just, the money was just pouring in and they were able to travel the world and have prizes of a million yeah. dollars just because people were watching these shows where you put a bunch of people in a house and you got to play games. It's, exactly. I don't know. Reality, it's just incredible. Yo, real quick, not just to break it off for one second. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the game show Solitary? Solitary. It used to air on like the fox something network no i do not know about this game oh man fox had a really obscure television network i forgot what it was called but they would show it to be honest it was kind of like spike tv kind of the same kind of like extreme vibe kind of things like that but that's that it was a fox subdivision and they had a show called solitary and it was uh it was kind of a similar idea to uh shows like big brother and things like that but how it worked is uh, it, it had like a science fiction kind of idea or premise towards it. But if you think about it realistically, it's probably just in a sound stage somewhere. But the contestants live in these pods. Oh, you told me about yeah. this before. And yeah. the pods are designed that they have like a little side room with their bed where they sleep in. But then when they have to go back into the main pod, it always has like everything they need for the next challenge uh. and stuff like that. But the idea is that they're by themselves for the, the entirety of the challenge. They're allowed to very like in very... Uh, slight ways or like two times a season they could say something to another member on the show or sometimes it's just a message that they hear through a speaker like it's not you know what I mean but it's an interesting concept and the challenges they used to have them do were fucking crazy there was like one where the final challenge were like these the, the, the two remaining contestants had to lay on a hammock of chains for as long as they could and it went on for like hours well, until yeah. eventually like one guy who had like imprints on his body just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, he was probably he bleeding to, at that yeah, point. Yeah, it was fu- but it's a crazy fucking show. I used to watch it a lot. I don't know. It was just a perfect uh, reality fodder. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it had a good amount of seasons too. I want to say it had like hmm. four seasons or something. Damn, we got to fucking marathon some... Now I want to figure out what that fucking network was real quick. Yeah, we feel like we, we looked this up on the show before. I remember because we were like on Google or Wikipedia for like 20 minutes. I mean, I'd believe it. I don't think this is cooperating. No? Hold on. I typed in Solitary Fox Network. 
Fox Reality Channel. It was for reality TV. That's what it was. Yeah. Damn, can we fucking just go back in time? Damn, I nailed it. Four seasons. Look at that. Damn, it's like you looked this up before. I didn't. I just remembered it in the middle of our conversation about uh, reality shows that take place in a room. But, you know. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Solitary. Yeah. Go watch this brand new show. Go watch Solace Hair. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy in his room. You know what else I watched? Yeah, what? I watched some superhero movies. Oh. And I just wanted to briefly talk about them. Okay. I watched some. I watched two superhero movies right. that I haven't oh, seen right. in a very, very long the, time. The timer disappeared for like five oh, seconds yeah. on the camera, and it scared me. No problem. All right, we're good. But, uh, we're but good. I, I watched some superhero movies. I watched... Uh, specifically, <coughs> I watched two movies that I hadn't seen in a very... Very long time. In one uh, one case, I hadn't seen the first one in uh, probably three-ish years. Seven. And yes. I hadn't seen the second one since I saw it in theaters for the second time, I think. But uh, point is, is, it's been a while, and I rewatched. It has been a while, and I rewatched Deadpool and Deadpool 2. And those movies are mad good. Holy crap, I totally forgot about that. I gotta go back. I've only seen them like once. Yeah, Deadpool. Well, the, like my little short consensus is Deadpool one is still like one of the best superhero movies. Period. It's like so faithful to the character. It's equally funny as it is heartfelt. I mean, everything about that movie is such a beautiful touch to the character and the story. Deadpool two is a little more shaky, but I think it's also because it kind of falls into that uh, that unfortunate formula where the first movie is does so well because it's so funny and so vibrant yeah. and then they're like let's just do that all the time for the second movie and then and it's, it's like too much it's a little too much you see it happened with like thor when, oh, when yeah. taika waititi came in and then just made love and thunder like ridiculous and shit like that but uh but it's 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 still really good it holds up i was gonna say the cgi in deadpool 2 is atrocious most of the time oh yeah not gonna lie there were some scenes rewatching it on disney plus that i was like oh my god like my other thing is it's easier to get past shit like that when the movie is zany and ridiculous because yeah. it's not really the main focus like yeah, when i yeah, see yeah. it it's more so like wow but like if i were to see that in like i don't know fucking an actual like serious yeah like if i were to see that in like wakanda forever or something like that i'd be like (laughs) what the fuck is that goofy shit which is funny because one of the bigger like uh you know black panther the the original one did so well like it was one of the first uh, superhero movies to be considered for like oscars and stuff like that Mm. but one of the biggest drawbacks from the first movie is that the final fight scene between t'challa and killmonger is like one of the worst made CGI fight scenes ever made. It's like really technically there's blighting bugs and issues in it to the point where to the na- it, it's one of those things where like somebody has to tell you and then when you watch it you're like, "Oh, that looks weird as shit." You know yeah. what I mean? So, it's kind of funny how like one of those movies that's considered to be one of the best also has issues in that vein, but which just proves that sometimes it's not that important. Yeah. And it, I mean, we're also just getting to the point where like everybody thinks they know what CGI is and stuff like that, which is kind of true because it's getting to the also to the point where movies are relying on it more heavily. But yeah. people are just getting more like critic. They're becoming more critical, critical about it because it's like they're like, oh, that's bad CGI. But it's like, is it, you know, mm-hmm. do you know how it was applied? Do you know what else they could have done? But that's just my take on it. You know, it looked bad. It did. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the yeah. specifically the scene in uh, in Deadpool two where like uh, there's like a scene where Domino played by Zazzy Beats is like walking through the street and Domino's whole shtick in the in the comics is she's lucky so like, oh yeah so she's sense. walking through like traffic and none of the cars hit her all these explosions are happening and all the shrapnel's like barely missing her but everything in that scene is, is just like they took the dial and put it to fourteen it's just like ridiculous but it's fun it's good. Deadpool 1 is still the solid 9 out of 10 movie. Easy. Deadpool 2, maybe like a 7.5, but... It's so pretty And cool. also to clarify, I saw Glass Onion again. It's like a 9 out of 10 movie. Knives Onion is a 9 out of 10 as well. So maybe Glass Onion is an 8.5. I don't know. I don't Knives know. Out is better in my opinion. I don't know where these rankings fall, man. Yeah, I don't know. I would always feel bad because it's like... I would really have to not enjoy a movie to give it under like a 6. You yeah. know what I mean? Maybe I'm just a kind critic. And I'm a hater too, but I, I watch a movie. Even if the movie's not that good, I'm like, that's a five and a half. You know what I mean? Like, if you, you know, it would have to be like bad yeah. for me to give. Thing with music too, it's like it would have to be your like real bad for me to give that rating. So yeah, go watch Deadpool and Solitary. These brand new programs. Brand new, never brand came new, out before. never never been seen before. Yeah. I was also gonna say I set a goal for myself this year. Okay. I feel like you'd also kind of like appreciate this goal. 
I have uh, I have officially strapped my boots. I've tightened the belt. On the boot? I don't know where I'm going with all this uh, this colorful imagery. You, you buttoned the collar. <laughs> buttoned the collar. You put but the I've, tie on. He's... I've decided that in this year of our Lord 2023, I am going to attempt to get back into speed running. Hey. I wanna I wanna just like learn different games, games that interest me. Really I have an idea. On, yeah. I have I have a great idea. I have a great idea. Joystick speed run marathon. I'm down. We all learn. We all pick up back our old games. Yep. We have Jerry. You just do. The guys could do like a Mega Man race or some mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. You and me could do like eight games. <laughs> oh, legit. Yeah, I'll, I'll literally just download a Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance emulator on Fuck your computer. That. Just bring the Ouya yeah, and just yeah, have yeah, yeah. Dylan's Ouya block. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna speed run three Pokemon games. Another game you never heard of. Anti Gravity. Stuart Little. <laughs> Stuart Little Two. American Dream. It's a game you fucking. Crazy. Oh now I thought of this because I was looking up like speedruns on speedrun.com and I was like, do I have any games on PS5 that I could speedrun? Mm-hmm. Not really. There's not a lot. No, but... there isn't really a lot. However, I found a couple of contenders that I was like, hmm. I also found it kind of funny. There was a speedrunner I used to watch back in the day. Remember that game Titan Souls that I used to play oh, a yeah. lot? Where it's like the whole, it's like a mm-hmm. top down. You were good game. at that. You yeah. were mad good at that game. Too. And I tried to learn the run. There was a guy who used to run it. His name is Zick3. Okay. And uh, I knew him as a Titan Souls runner. That was that. And then a few years later, I saw he had a run at like GDQ 2020 or something like that, 2021. And it was a Spyro Reignited Trilogy run. And that's kind of like where he falls now. Like he's a Reignited Trilogy yeah. Spyro runner. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then in recency, like now that I'm getting back into the speedrunning game, I went to his like channel and saw his records. You want to hear the games he speedrun? All right. Uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Uh, Toy Story 2. Okay. Uh, Sly Cooper 1. It's literally like all my games. And yeah, I'm like, bro, he, so like my new thing. Swag, no, my new thing is I want to like start watching his runs and kind of like freshen up all the games I used to run with new routes. Yeah, and, and then find another and... game or two that you really like. Mm-hmm. And really. But that's what I want to do in 2023. I, wanna... I will, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll join you on that. I want to compete against myself again. I'll join, uh, it was a fun time. I'll join you. Down. We gotta figure out what we're racing. I'll learn Story a little too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll learn. I'll, it. I'll learn Toy Story too. Sounds good. We'll do it. We'll meet in the middle. That's fun. Well, That's kind of fun. <laughs> we're doing movie sequel movies. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> what What else is there? Uh, Taken three. I don't know, bro. PS one. <laughs> I don't know, bro. There's a lot of fucking movie games out there. Can we talk about one last thing before we uh we end the show? Yes, I have a little bit of a public service announcement. Uh oh. Yeah, not really. Okay. Good old PSA. Uh, there's a holiday coming up. Is it Martin Luther King? Day? Yeah. So that's weird because normally when you hear holiday, and you think, Ooh, you know, that's your original <laughs> thought, <laughs> right? You see where I'm going with this, right? Martin Luther King Day. It's kind of like we honor. He's off. We're, we honor him. We're off. You know, it's like the vibe is completely different. In fact, I feel like Martin Luther King Day is like the damn, I hope I could work so I could get time and a half kind uh-huh. of day. Uh, but I'm not not to make a comedy out of this situation, but I would like to say that uh, a thing that is not taught a lot about on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Uh, in 1999, there was a civil lawsuit by the King family against several people involved with the U.S. government because it was proven in a court of law that he was killed by the U.S. government along with the CIA, the FBI, and many other people who lived in the city that he was murdered mm-hmm. in. And it is proven fact. Yeah. And how, like, like where the fuck are the infographic bitches? You it's know what in, I mean? It's not in the textbook. It's not, so. it's, it's not even, it's not, like, trendy. You know what I mean? It's not, like, oh, we're into, like, other, like, SJW stuff and, like, uh, feminism. You know what I mean? Like, where are, like, the woman, you know, how, like, you've seen the infographic and you go to the next story, it's that same post. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the same post. And you're like, bro, what is it? You, you think you're fucking eyewitness news or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like post that i feel like that's really important for people to know because they're like oh yeah martin luther king he was sadly assassinated by a, a, a shooter who was working alone it's like no like it's like jfk where like people are like oh you know it's a kind of like assume that like jfk something was going There's on there you know yeah uh but yeah m- um <clears throat> essentially the king family thought for you know decades yeah that he was unfairly persecuted and that there was a whole thing going on and in fact literally as time went on, hundreds upon, and at the time when they actually did the civil suit, uh, their lawyer had 
89 witnesses or people involved and over a thousand different documents of people talking about it, planning it, etc. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, rest in peace to Martin Luther King. So when King. you celebrate this holiday, yeah. So when you when you don't celebrate because you don't, that's not what you do. You don't. Woo! Yeah. Because <laughs> what other what other? I mean, I guess Veterans Day too is another one. Yeah. Another There's a few holidays, the somber ones. Uh, before we end this podcast, yeah. what if I told you that's the second time you've mentioned that story on Team Joystick? Good. Uh, go ahead and check out episode five of Quantum Conundrum to see Dylan say that exact story before I cut him off to tell him that I can't hear his story. Because I'm too busy it's playing a puzzle game. game. Uh, but it's great that you finally got to finish that story. Yeah, I'm and, very uh, happy. Because honestly, now it's relevant more than ever. And now people, like, you know, read about it. It's actually quite interesting. Wendigoon, the YouTuber, has a really good video on look it. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. He, uh, he Dylan made, the Scholar. Yeah. In fact, the, uh, anyone who covers this issue, by the way, on YouTube, they put, uh, they put like, so it doesn't get, like, as a joke, it's like, it's all spoken about in hypothetical or it's like satire. Like yeah. all of the people that talk about it, they're like parody. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, she so was killed by it. the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a hype of supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now it's time for jam and yam of the week. It is. I know the name of my jam, but I am not familiar. It has like with five artists. artists. I remember. It, it has like three, I think, even mm. though it's like one vocalist and producers, but you know, you know how music be sometimes. Oh, you know what it is? Uh, this song is called On and On, and it's by Peary or Petey and Tommy Villiers. What is it? Vill- 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 Villiers? I, I don't, if it's French, it's Villiers. I think it's Villiers. But, but re- if, but, if he's not French, then he's Villiers. But regardless, it, the third uh, artist, it's because I think they have like a group called Peary and Tommy. So that's their oh. collaboration. So on and On by Peary and Tommy. Petey and Tommy. I don't know. I, I don't know when not to fucking make it a... Uh, is there a word for that when the R is like a R and not an R? You know what I mean? The, the rolling. Wait, what do you mean? Like it's a rolled R, I guess. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Right, whatever. Uh, there's like a there's like a a linguistic term for it. Anyways. I don't necessarily know it. You should know this, Dylan. I should. I'm a fucking loser. <sighs> My yam of the day, yam of the week. Right? That's what we do. Yeah. Yam, the yam of, the, of week. the day. Yeah. Yam of the day. Check in tomorrow. No, my yam of the week is "Lover" by Vito. Uh once again, emo rap, great uh, beat, ten out of ten. Your vibe to this forever. Fire. Yeah, very cool song. Put her there, partner. Thanks for watching episode 124 of the Joystick Show. Is Holy it just shit. me or did this one come and go? Yeah. This one felt we, fast. We're recording right now. Right? Crazy. We're not just having a regular talk. Yeah, I thought we were just talking in your basement for no reason. Yeah, we. what if we've been doing that for 123 <laughs> weeks? I, I I checked the YouTube. Nobody there are no uploads. There's like one. There's like two. There's fucking episode one of Meat Boy. That's it. And I'm like, <laughs> we've been, we've been, <laughs> we all just start to fade away. No. Get ready for that sketch. Oh, no. It'd be really helpful if you could like this episode of the uh, the Joystick Show. That is our podcast that comes out every Wednesday. That's what you're watching, watching right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> and you could also subscribe to Team Joystick, which is where you're watching this. It's yeah. a fun variety YouTube channel where we put out tons of fun content, some comedy stuff, some cooking stuff, lots of video game stuff, lots of us talking, lots of us being friends. You know the vibe. Uh, Without further ado, from all of us here at Joystick, it has been great to have you join us here at the table, my pal, my friend, my goody old pal, and uh, we're going to wa- fucking fire Joey. Watch out for that government. He's not wrong, by the way. Fuck Joey. <laughs>